this cruise is going to start in Key West and head towards Cuba and then turn back up into the Gulf of Mexico. This is the NOAA ship Nancy Foster. It is one of NOAA's 20 or uh, about 20 research vessels. We've been diverted from our normal work to go and address Deepwater Horizon oil spill issues. Well, this survey is the first one to look at the uh, sort of the far field circulation in the Gulf of Mexico since uh, the spill occurred. We're preparing now to get underway and head into the loop current area. We have scientists from AOML here in Miami and also uh, the Southeast Fisheries Science Center here in Miami. Uh, and we're going to be doing both physical oceanography and biological uh, oceanography sampling during the course of this cruise. It's, it's kind of a joint effort. Rather than just look at the surface circulation, which a lot of the satellites and the remote sensing can do, we've got a variety of instruments that we can actually lower down all the way to the bottom. A lot of these measurements, these types of measurements, has been made right at the spill area, very close. This is the far field measurements, so it is the first time that um, those deep water measurements all through the water column are being done a long way away from the well. And we also have the ability to take these water samples and, and check them and see if there is indication that there's oil in them. We'll be working 24 hours a day taking all kinds of samples um, using our electronics that are mounted in the hull, lowering the, the nets and the um, conductivity, temperature, um, depth sensor, the CTD. Uh, so there's, there's just a whole variety of things that we're going to be able to do on this mission. So one of the things we want to look at is how well connected this, this ring uh, is to the, to the current uh, right now. Oil in the northern Gulf, Gulf of Mexico, or, or petroleum contaminants, um, could potentially be entrained in the large-scale circulation features. We want to know if it's a single connected feature, uh, which would uh, promote entrainment to uh, fa areas farther away, like South Florida, or if, or if some of these uh, features are going to stay put and, and recirculate in the Gulf of Mexico. A lot of the information, especially the physical information, will be made available almost on a daily basis. Our plankton work is much more time consuming. When we do a plankton tow, you know, we'll take measurements, we'll, we'll get a, a volume of the plankton, we'll be able to look and see some basic information that will be available immediately after the cruise. But it's going to take us probably in the vicinity of six months to sort the fish larvae out of each one of these samples and then identify the fish larvae and then be able to have some results to uh, work with. So our part will not be available until further down the road. This has the potential to give us a much better um, understanding of what's going on in the in not only the surface but in the deep areas. So if this cruise detects something different from what we've known in the past, then yes, it, it could potentially change the forecast of impacts to areas 